Once in a while, I get asked the question, what are your favorite board games of all time? What is your top 10? And I've already lied to you in the heading of this video. I'm not going to tell you my top 10. I'm going to tell you my only board games that I have with me. The reason for that is last year you may know that I moved to New York City and living in a small apartment, I had to pick and choose exactly which games are going to come with me and all the rest stayed at my parents' house. And so I brought only the necessities. So in that case it kind of goes without saying that these are my favorite board games, mainly because they were the ones that were chosen to come along with me. They're ones that I really like for one reason or another, and that might not necessarily because I love the game 100%, but maybe just because it will get to the table with certain people that I have around. Okay, first things first, uh, a little disclaimer. I said these are my favorite games. Some of them I haven't really put that much time into yet, mainly because I see a potential for it, but I haven't really found out if it's the perfect game for me or not yet. One game like this is Legacy of Dragonhold. I really, really loved the Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective series, so Legacy of Dragonhold was basically second on my list after those, and since I played most of those, I left them at home because you can only play through them once. Instead, I brought Legacy of Dragonhold. I haven't gotten this to the table as much as I would like to, uh, but I think at some point it'll come out and, uh, the times I have played it, I really enjoyed the weirdness of it. It's not perfect, but it's different. I'll skip Mouse Guard and all of my role-playing games because those are kind of a given. I brought a lot of them because they're just books and they're pretty easy. This one's a little bit bigger though. I am a sucker for Stonemeyer games, if you can't tell yet. Uh, I know he has a new game called Wingspan coming out. I'm not sure if I'm interested in that one. But I didn't think I'd be interested in wine either, and I really like making wine. It's just a beautiful game with pretty simple gameplay elements, and uh, some really sweet glass tokens that look like grapes when you put them over this certain grape thing. You have, you have to play it. It's good. The whole game's a worker placement game, obviously, and uh, I also have Tuscany and the Extra Visitors expansion here, which I haven't played with as much as I'd like to. Uh, this one needs to come to the table more, but definitely one that I love. Caverna has come with me. This is one of the games that I kind of upgraded instead of buying new games. Uh, in this one I put in my wooden insert for all my wood pieces. Um, I don't play this game an insane amount. Uh, it kind of gets pushed aside for some of the games later in this list. And a lot of these aren't in any order, they're just kind of the games that I like. Uh, but Caverna, if you've seen my Scythe review, the art I don't like, the pieces I absolutely love, and it's just a good package with some really sweet... with some really sweet farming simulator elements, and it's a lot of wood and gorgeous, and when it comes out to the table, it's a wonderful experience. And uh, so that one came along with me. This next game I previously left at home because one of my best friends in my hometown loves this game. And if you haven't heard me talk about it, I have a review on it. Leaving Earth, uh, Outer Planets, and Stations are both the expansions for it. Um, the tuck boxes are weird. Um, but I previously left at home because I liked playing with him a lot, um, but now that he, he comes up to New York and uh, we play this. So in my last trip home, I brought all three of them. And this game is completely unlike a lot of other games. It's basically all cards, but it's also an exploration game into space and historically not accurate. Some of it's historically accurate, and a lot of it isn't. And it's gorgeous. Uh, Luminaris didn't have that many games they had developed by the time they made this one. Now they have some, I think it's like Titan of Industry, something to do with industry um, that looks really fantastic. But this was one of their first that I was introduced to and I was kind of blown away. So this one's fantastic takes up a very long evening, it has a lot of math in it, and it's wonderful. The 
three you might have been eyeing on my shelf over here is Bonanza with two of the expansions, Princes and Pirates. Uh, Bonanza's another weird one. All my games are weird. Uh, Bonanza's about bean farming, but it's super abstract for some reason. My brother really liked this one, and it is really enjoyable for how odd it is. Definitely sticks around. It's one of those games because my brother likes to play it a lot, and uh, so I enjoy it. And then this trifecta, uh, my review on Secrets tells you why I absolutely love this game. It still gets played basically constantly. Uh, it's fantastic, it's pieces are wonderful, that's there. This one I picked up, I know it's one of Bruno Fiduti's, like, er, not earlier, but earlier than this one. Um, and so I picked it up because I really liked Secrets, and uh, it's enjoyable. It's uh, basically the same kind of thing. Uh, and so I like that one. Also, it's in a small box and fits right along with these ones. And the last one is Citadels, which I had a micro review in my, uh, in my Hive giveaway video, I guess. Um, this one is just wonderful. It has stayed in my collection. You can see it's pretty banged up. The cards are all worn down and bent. And that's what tells me a game uh, needs to stick around, is when it's really worn down because it gets to the table and it gets chosen over a lot of other ones. So those three, definitely fantastic. These also come with me on a lot of trips just because I can throw one in my bag really small. Or I can take the cards out and put it in like a deck box. While looking for another game, I found Hive. This one stays in my backpack, so it's a given. Speaking of deck boxes, uh, this is a deck box with one of my favorite games, uh, Lord of the Rings, the card game. This is basically all I brought. Uh, I have the other cards in another deck box, um, but I don't have the box or anything because I can play the whole game like this, which is awesome. Uh, this is my uh, current adventure. I have Ruins of Belagos, which is beating the crap out of me. And um, this is one of my decks that I built, all sleeved up, and uh, my heroes, because Bjorn is the best character in the game, even though he's not. Um, Lord of the Rings, the card game, uh, challenges me in ways that a lot of board games don't, and it sticks around because I think it's a perfect package. It's tiny, it's art is beautiful, uh, it's so hard that I want to play it over and over again because it beats the hell out of me. And, uh, and I can play it alone. So, uh, this is, this is up there. This is a fantastic game. Before we get to the, uh, obvious ones, uh, this is Hanafuda. Um, it's, this is actually from Nintendo, from the Nintendo store. Um, and it comes, it's a Japanese card game that has these cute little cards. And I hardly understand it, but I like the game, um, and I'm terrible at it. So, very small, and um, the next ones aren't. So, jeez. Okay. That was a terrible noise. Twilight Imperium, fourth edition. I don't even know what to say about this. I like Twilight Imperium a lot. And it barely ever gets to the table. But when it gets to the table, it's incredible. And because I love games that change so much over time, this is one that every time you play it, before you get into the game, you're thinking about what specific strategies you want to try out and it changes the game every time, not just the game itself, but what what you go into thinking about it. So the first time you play, it's gonna be weird because you don't know anything about it. The second time you wanna try a new race, you wanna try new strategies. The third time you play it, uh, if you have that much time in your life, um, you, you start like developing what you did wrong and what you did right. And so the game like, takes on a it takes on a life of its own the problem is this one's a little bit harder to get people into um just because it takes a 
I'm not gonna say Twilight Imperium takes 15 hours and four hours to teach because I actually think 4th edition is incredible at teaching people how to play the game. I have the hardcover rulebook, which kind of speaks for itself, um, but the rulebooks themselves are really straightforward. The hardcover rulebook has 100 pages, but it also has history on all of the races. It has the history of the game itself and how it was developed. And then just in the middle, there's the rules that are really straightforward and really easy to learn, which is something I was incredibly surprised by. I thought this game would be something really hard to grasp when really they knew what they were doing when they were creating it. I mean, they've had like 30 years to develop it, so. It's a game that I keep around because it's a perfect package. It's a game that when I went to a party and talked to people about it, everyone said, okay, let's make a date to play this because Twilight Imperium is the, the pinnacle of board games in some ways. So it's a conversation piece more than anything. And I love keeping it around even just for the thought of playing it sometimes. And then when it does get to the table, it's even more rewarding. Okay, I saved the next one for last because this is my top board game of all time. If you haven't realized it already, I talk about Scythe a lot. And there's a lot of boxes for it. I mean, you can, there's another one up there. Um, because I think it's my perfect game. It's not a game that I thought was gonna be insane when I started playing it. I loved the art, I loved the mechs, I loved the meeples, I loved all of the pieces, the cardboard that you set in. Watch my Scythe review because after I played it a few times, the things I was talking about with Twilight Imperium really started to take a hold of me in Scythe. Because with Scythe, now, if my brother wants to play it and one of his friends comes over, I can say, I'll teach it to you in three minutes or less. I'll teach it to you while we're playing it, because Scythe makes sense. All of the boards, all of the rules, everything in the game makes a lot of sense. And I didn't have to play 50 games to understand it completely. I just had to play one and then say, oh yeah, okay. And then when other people join in, I can just say, yeah, you do that. And it makes sense to them. And the next time they play it, they get that, that spark, the, oh, last time I did this. So this time I'm going to do this. I'm going to choose this faction this time so that we can have a different game. I'm going to try and only use three meeples or use all of my meeples. I'm going to try and win without gaining a lot of money during the game and just try to... Scythe is incredible. And I don't say that lightly, because I don't say that about a lot of games. It's just one that is exactly what I want. Something easy to play, changes every game because it feels so expansive, and is just gorgeous. The one thing I do have to say about Scythe is that uh, Stegmaier said he was done with the game a while ago and it keeps coming out with expansions, hence this giant box, um, but they're all perfect, which is annoying because I'm gonna buy them all. This is the game that I collect because I know Scythe will always get to the table basically seven times out of 10. So I know that I'd rather play with airships and the campaign expansions and things like that while I'm playing it rather than having three other board games around that I just don't play. I even have records of all the other games we've played and different things that we've tried and if Scythe was smaller it would be the only board game I own. Which is saying a lot. But even with it being so big and taking up almost like 10% of my room, it's perfectly worth it. So those are my favorite board games because they're technically the only board games I own right now. If another fantastic game comes out, then I might add it to my collection and I might take another one out. 
but right now, this is how it stands and we're having a ton of fun playing them. We're diving deeper into games rather than just buying 30 new ones and trying to learn rules every time. If you have any questions, I'm going to link all of the different reviews for a lot of these games below because the games that I really love, I love to review. So a lot of these already have videos if you want to go more in depth to what they are. But thanks for watching. Play some games that you really love. Ones that every time they come to the table, you think about in a different way to try and change the gameplay and to have fun with your friends that you've played with over and over again. Have a good night.